Hey everybody, Linus here. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future cybersecurity deep dives. Today, we're diving into a topic that's super relevant for everyone. The security of two-factor authentication or 2FA. You know that extra layer of security that's supposed to make your account's Fort Knox level secure? Yeah, well, here's the thing. Even the most robust 2FA systems out there aren't entirely foolproof. There are vulnerabilities, clever workarounds, and downright sneaky tactics that hackers use to bypass even the toughest 2FA setups. Now, I'm not telling you this to scare you, but rather to empower you. My goal today is to walk you through some of the most common and some not-so-common ways that 2FA can be compromised, because the more you understand these vulnerabilities, the better equipped you'll be to protect yourself. We're talking about real-world scenarios, practical tips, and actionable advice that you can use to level up your security game. So buckle up, grab your favorite beverage, and let's get right into it. Because when it comes to cybersecurity, knowledge is power. All right, let's kick things off with a classic attack method, brute forcing. Now, you might be thinking, but SAUS isn't 2FA supposed to prevent brute force attacks? And you'd be right, to an extent. See, 2FA is great at stopping those automated bots that try to guess your password a million times a second. But what happens when the system itself isn't configured properly? Imagine this. You're trying to log into your account, but you've forgotten your password. No worries, right? You click Forgot Password, and they send you a code to reset it. But here's the catch. Some websites don't have what's called an account lockout policy. That means an attacker can hammer away at your 2FA code during the password reset process, trying thousands of combinations until they hit the jackpot. It's like having a super strong front door, but leaving a window wide open. The attacker isn't brute forcing your password anymore, they're brute forcing that reset code. And if there's no limit on how many attempts they can make, well, it becomes a waiting game they're bound to win eventually. The craziest part is that this isn't some theoretical super advanced hack. It's a basic vulnerability that exists because of poor security practices. The good news is that it's easily preventable. Websites and services need to implement strong account lockout policies. That means limiting the number of incorrect login attempts, whether it's for your password or your 2FA code. Think of it like a burglar alarm. After a few wrong tries, it goes off, scaring the intruder away and alerting everyone to the potential danger. Account lockouts do the same thing in the digital world. They stop brute force attacks dead in their tracks. So, what can you do as a user? Be aware of this vulnerability and choose services that prioritize security. Don't be afraid to reach out to companies and ask about their account lockout policies. It's your data. You have every right to be informed. Okay, let's move on to a technique that's less about exploiting technical flaws and more about exploiting us humans. I'm talking about social engineering, the art of manipulating people into giving up sensitive information. Now you might think you're too smart to fall for a phishing scam, but social engineering is often much more subtle than a dodgy email asking for your bank details. Imagine this, you get a phone call from someone claiming to be from your bank's tech support. They sound professional, they use all the right jargon, and they even seem to know some of your personal information. They tell you there's been suspicious activity on your account, and they need to verify your identity by providing them with the 2FA code you just received on your phone. Sounds convincing, right? But here's the thing. It's a trap. These scammers are masters of persuasion, and they prey on our natural inclination to trust authority figures or people who seem knowledgeable. They might even create a sense of urgency or panic, making you more likely to act without thinking. And it's not just phone calls. Social engineering can happen through emails, text messages, social media, even in-person interactions. Think about those fake help desks set up at conferences or those seemingly harmless surveys asking for personal details. The key takeaway here is this. Be extremely cautious about who you share your personal information with, especially your two FA codes. Remember, legitimate companies will never ask you for your 2FA code over the phone, by email, or through any other means of communication. If you're ever in doubt, hang up the phone, close that email, and contact the company directly through their official channels. And here's a pro tip. Enable something called security keys or hardware tokens for your important accounts. These are physical devices that you plug into your computer or phone to authenticate your login. It's like having a physical key to your digital house 
making it much harder for social engineers to compromise your accounts. So far, we've talked about brute force attacks and social engineering, but now let's dive into the murkier waters of the Internet, the world of cookies and session hijacking. Now, I'm not talking about those delicious chocolate chip cookies. I'm talking about those little pieces of data that websites store on your computer to remember who you are and keep you logged in. Think of them like digital name tags. You visit a website, they give you a name tag, cookie, and every time you go back, they recognize you instantly. Convenient, right? Well, it can also be a security risk if those cookies fall into the wrong hands. That's where session hijacking comes in. Imagine an attacker lurking on a public Wi-Fi network, snooping on the data being transmitted. They're not interested in your cat videos. They're after those valuable cookies, specifically the ones that keep you logged into your bank account or your email. Using tools with names like Evil Jinx. Yes, that's really a thing. They can intercept your web traffic and steal your session cookies. And just like that, they're logged into your accounts as you without needing your password or your 2FA code. It's like someone stealing your wallet while you're still holding it. You don't even realize it's gone until it's too late. And this isn't limited to shady public Wi-Fi either. Attackers can use malicious links or even compromised websites to inject these cookie-stealing tools into your browser. So how do you protect yourself from this invisible threat? First and foremost, be extremely cautious about using public Wi-Fi especially for sensitive activities like online banking. If you must use public Wi-Fi, make sure you're connected to a reputable network and consider using a VPN, which encrypts your internet traffic and makes it much harder for attackers to intercept. Secondly, be wary of suspicious links or websites. If something looks off, it probably is. And lastly, make sure your browser and operating system are up to date with the latest security patches. These updates often include fixes for known vulnerabilities like those that allow session hijacking. Okay, let's get a little bit more technical and talk about the algorithms that power two-factor authentication, or 2FA. Now, I know algorithms might sound intimidating, but bear with me here. At the heart of many 2FA systems is something called a random number generator, or RNG. This RNG is responsible for generating those unique codes that you use to authenticate your logins. In a perfect world, these codes would be truly random, making it virtually impossible for attackers to guess or predict them. But in the real world, nothing is ever perfect. Sometimes the RNGs used in 2FA systems have weaknesses, subtle biases in their code that make them less random than they should be. And that's where things get interesting for attackers. By analyzing a large enough sample of 2FA codes, they can start to identify patterns and predict future codes generated by the flawed RNG. It's like figuring out the pattern on a lock based on how the key turns. It's a bit like that movie Rain Man, where Dustin Hoffman's character could count cards in a casino because he could spot patterns in the seemingly random shuffle. Attackers can do the same thing with 2FA codes if the RNG isn't truly random. Now, this type of attack is relatively rare because it requires a high level of technical expertise, but it highlights an important point. The security of your 2FA system is only as strong as the weakest link in its chain. So what can you do to protect yourself? Unfortunately, there's not much you can do directly to control the RNG used by a particular service. However, you can choose services that prioritize security and transparency. Look for companies that use reputable 2FA providers and are open about their security practices. And as always, stay informed. The world of cybersecurity is constantly evolving, and new vulnerabilities are discovered all the time. By staying up to date on the latest threats, you'll be better equipped to protect yourself from even the most sophisticated attacks. All right, let's move on to a type of attack that's been making headlines lately, SIM swapping. This one is particularly nasty because it targets a vulnerability in a system that many of us rely on, our mobile phones. See, many 2FA systems use SMS text messages to deliver those authentication codes. It seems secure enough, right? Your phone is password protected, and only you have access to it. But what if an attacker could redirect those text messages to a phone they control? That's exactly what SIM swapping does. Here's how it works. An attacker gathers personal information about you, things like your name, address, date of birth, maybe even your social security number. They then use this information to impersonate you and contact your mobile carrier. They might claim that they've lost their phone or that their SIM card is damaged and needs to be replaced. 
If they're convincing enough, the carrier will transfer your phone number to a SIM card that the attacker controls. And just like that, all your calls, text messages, and yes, even your 2FA codes are being routed to the attacker's phone. They can then bypass your 2FA protection, access your accounts, and wreak havoc on your digital life. So, how do you protect yourself from this insidious attack? First and foremost, be extremely protective of your personal information. Don't share it online unless absolutely necessary, and be wary of phishing scams that try to trick you into giving up this information. Secondly, consider adding an extra layer of security to your mobile account. Many carriers offer additional authentication options such as pins or security questions that make it much harder for attackers to perform a SIM swap. And lastly, be vigilant. If you notice anything unusual with your phone service, such as dropped calls, strange text messages, or a sudden loss of service, contact your carrier immediately. It could be a sign that someone is trying to hijack your SIM card. Now, let's talk about backup codes. You know, those seemingly harmless strings of numbers or letters that 2FA systems make you write down or store securely just in case you lose access to your primary authentication method. Well, as well-intentioned as they are, backup codes can become a major security liability if they fall into the wrong hands. Think about it. You've gone through the trouble of setting up 2FA, you're feeling pretty secure, and then bam, you lose your phone or your authentication app decides to have a meltdown. What do you do? You turn to those trusty backup codes, your lifeline back into your digital life. But here's the catch. Those backup codes are essentially like master keys to your accounts. If an attacker gets their hands on them, they can bypass your 2FA protection completely, regardless of whether you have your phone or your authentication app. So, how do these backup codes end up in the wrong hands? Well, it can happen in a number of ways. Maybe you wrote them down on a sticky note that mysteriously disappeared from your desk. Or perhaps you stored them in a file on your computer that got infected with malware. Or maybe, just maybe, you fell victim to a phishing scam that tricked you into handing them over willingly. The point is, backup codes are only as secure as the way you choose to store them. And let's be honest, human memory isn't exactly known for its reliability, and even the most secure-looking spreadsheet can be compromised if your device is compromised. So what's the solution? Well, the best way to protect yourself is to avoid using backup codes altogether. Instead, opt for more robust recovery options, like a dedicated hardware security key or an authentication app that supports multiple devices. These methods provide a higher level of security and are much harder for attackers to compromise. But if you absolutely must use backup codes, treat them with the utmost care and respect. Don't store them digitally where they can be easily accessed or stolen. Consider using a password manager to generate and store them securely. And whatever you do, don't share them with anyone, ever for any reason. Remember, with great backup codes comes great responsibility. So there you have it, folks. A crash course in the top six ways your 2FA can be bypassed. We've covered everything from brute force attacks and social engineering to cookie session hijacking and SIM swapping. And while it might seem like the internet is a scary place, remember this, knowledge is power. By understanding the threats and vulnerabilities out there, you're already one step ahead of the game. Keep those security best practices in mind, be vigilant, and don't be afraid to question things that seem off. And hey, if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more cybersecurity tips and tricks. Until next time, stay safe out there.